In addition to Sufre, Castri Southeast was one of the areas most affected by the passage of Tomas. Being the parliamentary representative for such a large constituency, as well as the minister who oversees the Communications and Works Ministry, his candle burned at both ends. But how did he do it? I've focused on Bexom Mac area in particular because of the flooding in this area. We have had to desill this river more than a dozen times, but we, we are seeing progress in that the recent heavy rains have not um, impacted us totally. The opposition called the bursaries being offered to parents on the eve of school reopening an election gimmick. On the contrary, Joseph cites this as further relief efforts. We were able through the Ministry of Education to introduce an additional book um, school bursary program that is assisting parents with uniforms, facility fees and, and different aspects of, of education. Forrester also has received his fair share of attention from the son of the soil with the construction of an entirely new playing field, a proposed low-income housing project and a planned upgrade to his burial facilities similar to the refurbishment of the Ticolor Cemetery, all of which he undertook. Thanks to the government of St. Lucia, we have been able to acquire 15 acres of land in this area. The primary purpose for the acquisition of this land is to establish community facilities and also housing. We have seen the construction of this playing field here in Forest here, and also a human resource center is being developed to be placed at the back of the playing field. Also, the residents of this community, especially the young people, will be able to find a house lot in this area. Once we have completed the subdivision of this property, it will be sold to residents of this community and possibly other St. Lucians who are looking for a prime piece of property. It would be good to know that the people of the community can own a lot and build their homes right here in Forest. I was curious to hear from the MP whether all of these projects being undertaken were contracted solely to UWP operatives, as the opposition leader alleges. The member, the member for Castri Southeast is anxious that I turn to contract of direct purchase. I'll oblige him. On December 16, 2010, the Prime Minister issued direct purchase approvals post-Hurricane Thomas. And I'm going to, to mention a few. Some of them are in the public domain. Triple Equipment Services, $421,767.29. Partial restoration of shock and bad ones with it. People at Equipment Services, anchoring of Wasco's ductile iron pipes at Millet, $62,650. Yes. Partial restoration of Trumase Bridge Approach, and a member from Miku North, I don't know if she's aware, People at Equipment Services, $100,496 for the hole just by the top of the bridge. Bexel School Compound Cleanup. People at Equipment Services, $448,170.75. Excavation in respect of the restoration of Wasco's intake at Wabin Poisson, People at Equipment Services, $109,000. Clearing of slides and drains in Bexon Mark, Eli Box Equipment Services, $40,800. Excavation in respect of the restoration of Wasco's intake, People at Equipment Services, $216,450. Clearing of slides and drains in Bexton Mark Heavy Machinery and Construction, $84,031.25. Guy Joseph, however, is not apologetic in the least for what Dr. Anthony calls the unconventional methods of awarding contracts as job for the boys. But who are the boys? The boys are St. Lucians. If they call them job for the boys, I can tell you, at least four contractors in the Kuwaiti funded project are not known supporters of the UWP. They are known supporters of the Labour Party. And that's why I, 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 I took a job at, at the leader of the opposition. And I said to him, when you call the names 
of the list of contractors. There were certain names that was first on the list you skipped. And I asked, why did you skip these names? Did you skip them because you know that they are your supporters? So whether people want to think now, we, we're just doing things. So this is not about votes. This is about changing the lives of the people of the constituents. His rationale is that assigning work to his constituents seems simple enough to him and asserts that party colors play no role in the awarding of contracts, a point he drove home during his inaugural budget debate in 2007. Free packages on the, the um, tertiary road project. Gadakan got package one. Package two, Josim. Package three, CCI. Not a single local contractor was able to fit into any one of these projects. The original arrangement was 30% of the work should go to local contractors. But the deal was so bad with these foreign contractors that all the locals had to pull out because the foreign contractors were paying them below cost to work on these roads while they were getting the bulk of the money because the project went to them in the first place when it should have gone to locals. As passionate as he is about the upkeep of the road network, construction of bridges, footpaths, drains, and other construction projects, Guy Joseph says he's equally zealous about youth development. His constituency office has been instrumental in working with the private sector to provide young persons from the community with job training and placement opportunities in an effort to further reduce unemployment in his area. It's a 10-week program. It's two weeks in the classroom and eight weeks in the work area. I got a call from the secretary saying that there's a program and they want some young children, well, young people, in fact, to do that program at Sandals, and I was up for it because I was unemployed. From Ms. Chico's perspective, the youth of this constituency have benefited significantly from the representative's youth development strides. I will personally support him because he's more youth-oriented. He has a youth group and it's really active. He sponsors us. If we have anything that's beneficial to do, he will sponsor us. And I haven't heard anything Mangal's doing for the youth, so I would definitely go to Guy Joseph rather than Mangal. Ivo Nassif was the Minister of Tourism for the Nature Isle of Dominica for two years. He accepted just one EC dollar for service to his people. I asked Mr. Joseph, if he would accept just one Eastern Caribbean dollar for an entire year to represent the plight of the residents of Castry Southeast. He was eager to remind constituents that from the time he became elected, he has donated $1,000 monthly directly from his salary to fund sporting projects in his constituency and would gladly follow Nassif's example if asked. Nine out of ten times you spend more than what you make in politics on the people, regardless of which political side you are on. So I don't think that whether, if they, they give me a dollar, I'm better off, you know. Because at the end of the day, I can tell the people I'm not working for a salary. With a motto of, from the people, for the people, Guy Joseph says he has delivered on the projects he set out to accomplish during his tenure. Time alone will tell if Castry Southeast 32-year trend of always voting for the party that forms the government will return both him and the United Workers' Party to power.
It has been a pleasure working with the people of Castro Southeast during these five years. And I really look forward to another term in office when we can complete the task that we have started in rebuilding our constituency and establishing all the things that we want in Castro Southeast. Castro Southeast is a constituency that is very dear to me and I know the people who live in this community love their communities. Let us continue to work together. Let us do what is necessary come election day to see to that Castro Southeast remains in good hands. It's politics time again. Politics time.